Today we've got two nice problems from Canadian math Olympiads. So the first we'll look at is from 1996 and it's a nice problem involving the logarithm. So let's suppose that the log base 2b of 1994 is equal to the log base b of 486 times the square root of 2. And then our goal is to determine b to the sixth power. Okay, well, let's recall how the logarithm is defined. Because often for inverse functions, including the logarithm, which is of course a classic example of an inverse function, it's easier to work in maybe the other setting, the non-inverse setting. So in this case, the non-inverse setting, if you will, of the logarithm is exponential. Okay, so let's recall the following. We have y equals the log base b of x if and only if b to the y power is equal to x. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's maybe set y equal to each of these logarithms separately. And then we'll have some sort of nice equation that we can hopefully solve for y and then solve for b. So we've got y equals the log base 2b of 1994. And then, of course, we have y equals the log base b of 486 times the square root of 2. Okay, so now we'll, like I mentioned before, we'll transport each of these to their exponential versions. So let's see what we get from this first one. We'll have 2b raised to the y power is equal to 1994. But I think here it'll be useful to factor 1994 into, well, its prime factorization. So this is in fact two cubed times three to the fifth. I'll let you guys work that out if you need to. And then, well, we'll do the same thing here. We'll transport this to its exponential version. And that's gonna give us b to the y power is equal to, let's see. Oh, that should be a log base b here. So b to the y power is equal to 2 to the 3 halves times 3 to the 5th. Okay, nice. But now, well, where can we go from here? Well, let's maybe distribute this y across the two terms of the product. That'll give us a 2 to the y times a b to the y equals 2 cubed times 3 to the 5th, which is, of course, going to give us b to the y equals, it'll be 2 to the 3 minus y times 3 to the 5th. There we just divided by 2 to the y. Oh, but now check it out. We've got two expressions here for b to the y. So that's good. That sets up this nice equation that we can hopefully use to solve for our value of y. So we've got 2 to the 3 minus y times 3 to the 5 is 2 to the 3 halves times 3 to the 5. But then, well, what does that tell us? Well, that'll tell us that 3 minus y is equal to 3 halves, which in turn, you can find that y itself is equal to 3 halves. Okay, so now let's put a little box around that. And then what we'll do from here is plug that into perhaps this equation. So let's snake that around. So plugging that into this equation, what do we have? Well, we have b to the 3 halves is equal to 2 to the 3 halves times 3 to the 5th. But let's look over here at our goal. Our goal is b to the 6th power. So what we'll do to achieve b to the 6th power is raise both sides of this equation to the 4th because four times three halves is six. So of course, if you raise this to the fourth power, over here you're gonna have b to the sixth as needed, and here you're gonna have two to the six times three to the 20. Okay, so there you've got it. We finished our first problem. Now let's move on to the second, which is to find the minimum value of this function, which is called f of x, which is 
3 sine x plus 4 cosine x minus 10 times 3 sine x minus 4 cosine x minus 10. Okay, so let's bring that function up here. And as we bring it up here, we're going to rewrite it a little bit. So let's take this first term of the product and rewrite it as 3 sine x minus 10 plus 4 cos x, where we're thinking about that 3 sine x minus 10 as being grouped together. Okay, and then, well, we'll do the same kind of thing for this second term. We'll have 3 sine x minus 10 minus 4 times cosine x. But now look at what we've got here. We've got something of the form a plus b times a minus b. So of course, when you multiply that out, you're gonna get a difference of squares. And once we get a difference of squares, well, we can start simplifying it, hopefully. Okay, so we're gonna, in fact, have three sine x minus 10 squared, and then minus, well, 16 times cosine squared. Okay, great. And now what we'll do is multiply this out. So that's gonna give us a nine sine squared x minus a 60 sine x and then plus 100. And then next up, what do we have? Where we're gonna have minus 16 plus 16 sine squared x. There I use the fact that cosine squared is one minus sine squared. Okay, so now let's combine terms. So we'll have nine sine squared plus 16 sine squared. That's gonna be 25 sine squared. But I'm gonna go ahead and write that as five times sine of x squared. That's actually gonna be kind of a nice way to work with this. And then next up, what we'll do is do the same kind of thing here. We'll bring a five and combine it with the sine, leaving us with minus 12 times a five sine of x. And then of course, now we're gonna have plus 84. Great. But now I'm actually gonna take that 84 and split it into two pieces. I wanna split it into 36 plus 48. And I'd like to do that because if you look at the first three terms here, now that's a perfect square binomial. Now, of course, you could look at this after the fact and think, oh, I need to complete the square, or maybe completing the square would be useful. But, you know, we might as well just do it all at once. Okay, now factoring, what will we get? Well, we're gonna have five times sine of x minus six quantity squared plus 48. Well, if we were to replace sine of x with a variable, for example, t, that would be an upward facing parabola. And furthermore, the y coordinate of the upward facing parabola is 48. And that's gonna occur when the inside here is equal to zero. So it may look like the minimum here is 48, but in fact, that's not the situation we have here because let's observe that this five sine x minus six will not ever achieve the value of zero. And it will never achieve the value of zero because sine of x is clearly between negative one and one. But it would have to be equal to, let's see, six over five, which is larger than one for that to cancel out to be zero. So now let's observe that if we take this fact that sine of x is between negative one and one, notice multiplying all of those parts by five and then subtracting six, well, what do we have? Well, we're gonna have our maybe combination here, five sine x minus six is between negative 11 and negative one. But then squaring that, what are we gonna get? Well, we'll have five sine x minus six quantity squared is always bigger than or equal to one and less than or equal to 121. And then, well, does it achieve any of those? Well, yes, it in fact does achieve those because, well, it's gonna achieve this value of one when sine of x is equal to one. For example, at x equals pi over two. So, well, since it achieves that minimum, well, this all is going to be less than or equal to one squared plus 48 equals 
49. And then, well, if you want to know where this occurs, it occurs when x is equal to pi over 2, as we discussed before. Okay, so there we have it. We found the minimum of our function, and that's a good place to stop.